and a practical man, I tell you that the need of the hour is desperate. Without the help of the young men of Australia, we cannot win this war. The Air Force asks you to do a man's job, to take your place alongside the gallant pilots, observers, and air gunners who are now fighting your battle. We want you to fly these planes. If you are between the ages of 18 and 32, the Royal Australian Air Force wants to see you urgently. Come on, do a man's job. G'day everyone, thank you explorers. Uh, today, uh, just a little bit of a, uh, a relic hunt. Um, boy, I. I haven't got my detector in here today. Um, I'm, in, I'm in the far north of Australia again, on the uh, remote Cape York Peninsula at an old Air Force base that was used operationally during the Second World War. And um, what you can see behind me here is the uh, is a dispersal taxiway, um, which is gravel, but either side of it is are all the aircraft revetments. So what I'm going to do is going to have a bit of a, a wander around these aircraft revetments, see if I can pick up any old relics. Principally because uh, one of the long-time locals up here told me there's a radial engine in behind one of these re revetments, I assume that would be off a Beaufort or a Beaufort, or probably a Bristol Hercules. I'll correct myself if I'm wrong, which I will be, but um, let's see if we can find that and see what other relics we can find around these old aircraft revetments. No detector today. One, because the grass is really long around the edge of these revetments. Um, detecting isn't easy. And for the time you put in, um, you don't get much back. Principally though, because uh, yesterday I was just out on the road over there, the uh, main road, which is about uh, seven or eight hundred metres over there to the north, and I, uh, I was driving along there and a big taipan crossed the road in front of me, he was a monster, so uh, I'm a bit windy about taipans, so uh, <laughs> I'm going to stay out of long grass, and we're going to have a hunt around here and see what relics we can find from the war, and uh, hopefully we'll find that radial engine, so back shortly. Okay, well I'm inside one of the aircraft revetments now. The dispersal taxiway I was on earlier is actually gravel, but these revetments are uh, bitumen surfaced. You can see the bitumen's all peeling up now, of course, after all this time. But this is one of the few ones that's still got the earth blast wall around the uh, periphery of the revetment. A lot of them, they're all just earth mounds all around the edges of them, pushed up with a dozer, I suppose, but uh, a lot of them have eroded away over the years and they're uh, just little bumps. But this one is quite a decent, um, give you some idea what it was like uh, originally when they uh, parked an aircraft in here for, uh, these are the bomb proof revetments. Okay, well I'll have a look around this one and I'll see if that engine's in this one. Well I'm up on the revetment wall now, you probably get a better idea of, uh, or concept of this uh, aircraft revetment from up here. This is almost, uh, probably at the original height, this wall here. Big tree roots and that has sort of kept it intact, so uh, that's the main uh, bitumen uh, revetment in there, and the taxiway's just out in front of it. Well here's something that caught my eye off to the side of the revetments, it's uh, in quite good condition too. It looks like it's an engine inspection uh, platform or a work platform. You see the ladder on this side, and there to stand there where you can uh, work on the engines of the aircraft or panels or whatever up uh, up high. That's definitely a uh, World War II relic. That's in pretty good condition. Yeah, just standing up there still <laughs> where it was left behind. Well, anyway, I still haven't found that radial engine. I'm uh, heading up through this scrub up here and see if I can see anything up in there. Well I just came down, I was scouting along the top of this, uh, there's a little dry gully here I noticed these old, a uh, bit of an old drum, drum dump and rubbish dump I came over the top of that, up the top there and I was looking down into here and I noticed what looked like a piece of an aeroplane in the dump I've literally spent, literally the last 20 minutes chopping away that bush there which is terribly thorny uh, to get to this part of aeroplane that I've found and uh, here it is, have a look at it it's the top cowling off a P-40 Kitty Hawk. It's the, um, you can see there the uh, the front air intake up in this area here. The uh, the actual combing along the top is missing. It looks like it's been cut off actually. And it goes into the oil cooler on the top of that engine. Um, and it's still got some of the uh, the green uh, camouflage, that foliage green that the um, RAF uh, camouflage that was used on these aircraft. Uh, the RAF had P-40Es and M's and N's over a thousand Kitty Hawks served with the uh, RAF um, the time that this airstrip was in use 44, 45 I would suggest they'd be P-40M or N's 
So what I find that is, it's a complete top cowling. It's actually still got the butterfly flaps um, that were controlled uh, by the pilot to uh, to regulate the um, cooling air into the oil cooler on top of the engine, on the Allison engine. What a beauty. We'll have a close look at this. Just watch our form. 78 wing is ready to strike. Well, almost ready. He's perfectionist. Ah, but today the form must be perfect. Well, I'll just show you this, give you some idea of the size of this engine cowling. This is a complete uh, Allison engine. Top cover. This is the, uh, that's the oil cooler intake. There's a little butterfly flap in here controlled by the pilot to regulate the uh, cool, the cool air into the oil cooler on top of the engine. Here you would have the spinner and blow out the big famous uh, shark mouth with the radiator under the engine. But um, down in this area, you can see that's the oil cooler. That's the, the cool air coming through here and there's the, um, the section that is the main, it's actually still got the rubber uh, seal where it ran into the main uh, in, uh, oil cooler in behind the engine. Looks like um, this may not have been a crashed aircraft, because this is not a salvage area, it's just a, a rubbish dump, so they've dumped this cowling. Cut a, someone's cut a piece out of that, inexplicably. See where it's all been uh, bolted in it, uh, to the actual airframe, and this is what you can see, it's actually been unbolted. There's still rust, rusty rings through the washers. Well, wow, what a find. Fairly big piece of aeroplane. I'll take that home. Hang it in the shed. I don't think it'd be any good for anyone who's restoring a P-40. It's, uh, not many parts salvageable off it, unfortunately. But anyway, that's what a find that is. Good one. Oh, well, we'll keep uh, searching around this area and we'll see what we can find up in here. No engine yet. This uh, revetment, lots of drums on the surface of the bitumen, and uh, to my left here, a lovely old uh, relic. One of the ovens. One of the pretty big uh, oven. That one would have catered for a few blokes. Cook sort of sweated over that one for for uh, quite a few hours, would I imagine. Unfortunately, the door's gone. I usually got a maker's name or uh, some information on them, but yeah, old cast iron uh, cooking oven. You wonder how some of these things actually got put here because that wouldn't be. <laughs> There's no way they're going to have a cooking oven in an aircraft revetment, so I don't know where things get around these places. Anyway, we'll keep hunting around here, see what we can pick up in the bush. Well, no radial engine yet, but something a bit more sensational. I can't believe it. I've just come over this little ridge behind me. I spotted this sticking out of the uh, bush. It's the, uh, it's the landing gear from what looks to be a Royal Australian Air Force Beaufort uh, torpedo bomber. Where I say that, it's clearly identifiable by this lower nose section here. This is. One heck of a crash has gone on here. This is just a real mess. There's molted, uh, melted aluminium everywhere. Look, this is the bomb aimer's windows in the nose section from a Beaufort, definitely. Have a look over here. This is the armoured back from the pilot seat. That's that plate of armour sat behind the pilot seat, protecting from uh, flak and uh, oh yeah, solid piece of armour plate. Bits of aeroplane. Uh, all over the place and look it's just a big molted melted uh, molten aluminium with parts melted into it there's been a horrendous fire here hopefully uh, doesn't look good for uh, any of the uh, air crew but I'll find out what's going on here I don't I don't know of this wreck and I don't know what's happened here another piece of panel and just melted uh, fuselage ribs and sections the whole this is the cockpit obviously the nose section for the bomb aimer the pilot's armoured back on his seat and there's a major, this major piece of uh, fuselage here, or uh, what section is that? It's not a wing section, I'm not sure what that is. But anyway, well I'll scatter in the bush here and see if there's more of this wreck here. It's definitely not a, this is a crash site, it's clearly not um, being pushed here for salvage purposes. It's uh, the way the fire's gone down here and, the, and what's left of it, it's a crash site. So. Uh, like I said, I'll, get, I'll scout around, see what else we can find, but uh, um, and then I'll, I'll research what actually happened here and the identification of this aircraft. It's definitely a Beaufort, so it'll be a RAF aircraft. Won't be USAF. No worries. Okay, well I'll just scout around this area and see what else is here. 
Okay, I was sort of following a bit of a debris trail from that uh, those few pieces I showed you earlier on of this boat, but I've just come over this hill and I found the rest of the aeroplane. This here is the starboard engine. It's inverted and the wing lying there. There's a tail section a bit further over that way. We'll go and have a look at that in a minute. See the main exhaust port there on the starboard engine and the entire wing is here in situ, right out to the wing tip. Here's some more melted uh, aluminium parts. Boy, this thing's hit the ground with a thump, that's for sure. Uh, I'll definitely research uh, this wreck. I'd, oh, actually, I've not read of this wreck. I didn't know it was here, so... Uh, well, ho oh, hopefully I can uh, find some documentation on it, and I'll definitely put that on the video. Oh, look, here's the other wing. Okay, well, that's, that's the port wing. You can see the uh, that's the leading edge, that's the trailing edge. Look, there's a... There's a port flap. It's still there. Right, well, look, here's the aileron. Come out the back. Here's the main aileron hinge and the air airfoil section for the aileron. This is the aileron here. Something sit. One of the air intakes off an engine sitting on top of the wing. Okay, this one goes right out to the wing tip too, but. Uh, Tell you what, there's a lot of uh, melted aluminium. Uh, must have been a terrible fire when she crashed. Well, so we've got the uh, two wings. We've got one engine. We've got that uh, the bomb aimer's nose section on that uh, over the hill there, and the tail. So uh, I'd say the rest of it's uh, is just melted aluminium, burnt in the. Uh, Fire subsequent to the crash, I'd suggest. Yeah, she's definitely a Beaufort, you can tell by the tail. Look, there's a main uh, tail wheel yoke. Tail wheel long gone. So this is the uh, wiring, that'd be the um, probably the navigation lights on the rudder, on the fin rather. This part of the um, Port elevator. Yeah, there's no um, external paint visible. She's uh, long gone. Oh, there might be a bit of a demarcation line there. There'll be that rough sky blue under there, and uh, well, you can actually see a bit of a camouflage line there. Well, this is where the serial number would have been. There's just no trace of any lettering there. A9. It'll be under the uh, RAF system, the Beaufort. There you can see it clearly. See, it's a Beaufort by the shape of the tail and fin. And I guess the rudder on the boat must have been fabric. These are all built in Australia. We had over 700 of them in the RAF. Here's the port elevator. Starboard elevator. Look at the condition of the metal on the rudder. It's pretty good actually after all this time. I don't know what these holes are. It looks like someone's been... I hope they're not uh, serving here. Just cutting holes in her. Because then it looked like uh, that was part of the crash. But anyway... Uh, yeah, what's this here? This is a bit of a bit of fuselage section forward of the um, tail, and this is kind of the um, the layout of the place. Here's the uh, the starboard engine inverted with the engine nacelle. No engine, the engine's gone. That I showed you earlier. Port wings in that direction. This is the starboard wing. Another piece of uh, well, that's part of the engine nacelle. Definitely. Okay, well, isn't that amazing? I, I, I hope to find a radial engine. I didn't find that, but I found a, a whole aeroplane. Um, oh, look at this. Is the um, one of the actuating pulleys for the um, control cables to the uh, starboard ailerons and to flaps. Well, have a look at that, eh? That's just amazing. Look, uh, well, this is a good way to wrap the hunt up. It's, the sun's getting a bit low over there. Well, uh, I hope you've enjoyed that little bushwalk there. There's no metal detecting. Oh, I won't metal detect around uh, these sites, obviously, these old wrecks, because uh, they're often war graves, and um, out of respect, I wouldn't go anywhere near them with a metal detector. But uh, hopefully I can find out what happened here, and uh, the good news would be if no one was killed here, but uh, it doesn't look promising. It's just a heck of a wreck. She's uh, definitely hit the ground, and there's been a big fire here, so uh, anyway, look, uh, thanks for that, watching that video, everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, Best of luck on your next uh, metal detecting trip. Happy hunting. Bye for now. Meanwhile, Australia's infant aircraft industry grew quickly. 
Its first frontline bomber, the Beaufort, wholly constructed from locally manufactured parts, was completed only one month before Pearl Harbor. By late 1942, Fisherman's Bend Aircraft Factory in Victoria was producing 24 a month. was adapted from British designs, but had a different engine, the American Pratt & Whitney Wasp. It flew faster than its parent, had heavier armor and firepower. It was a deadly weapon. It carried a 2,000-pound bomb or torpedo load. Despite this load, it was highly maneuverable. 